Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on our Arduino tutorials, we're going to be taking a look at the concept of pulse width modulation, or PWM. So, pulse width modulation, if you look at your Arduino, there are these pins with the little squealies next to the numbers. And those signify pulse width modulation capable pins. Now, pulse width modulation is exactly what it sounds like. What it does is it creates a square wave with a certain period. So let's say it's a period of one millisecond. And it's turning it on for a certain time and turning it off for a certain time. And it's this width that you're modulating. It's a pulse width modulation. So now this percentage is called the duty cycle. It's the percentage of the period that is on. So a 20% 20 uh, 20 duty cycle on a 1 millisecond period is on for 200 microseconds. And a 60% duty cycle on a 1 millisecond period is on for 600 microseconds. So what, you, what this does is if you were to create a pulse width modulation signal, repeat it over and over and over again, on average you could create a pseudo analog voltage. So one of the things you can do with that is create a dimming effect for an LED. So again, that's just one of the applications, that's the first one I'm going to do with. So I'm going to set that up and let's go take a look at the code. So I hope in these tutorials uh, you can actually see the Arduino code a little bit better. I've made it bigger uh, and I've actually been able to get it so it doesn't crash consistently when I make the text bigger. So let's get started and again we start out this code like we would any other code so void setup and void loop and what we're gonna be if you look at your Arduino and pick one of the PWM pins uh, I'm just gonna pick pin 3 and we're gonna make it an output because it's still an output now to get I told you it's like a pseudo analog code, it's a pseudo analog signal. So the Arduino command to actually get it to, to create a pulse width signal is analog write, and it's the pin number, and then it's the duty cycle. So 100% duty cycle is always on, 50% is half the time on, and 25% is a quarter of the time on. So if you're doing this with an LED, it's moving so fast you can't see the individual on and off cycles. So it blurs together. So 25% duty cycle is on 25% of the time. So it's at 25% brightness. 100% would be all the way on. 50% would be 50% on. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to... Let's create a for loop. And let's just make it dim up and down. So analog right pin 3i. And we'll put in a slight delay of, say, 50 milliseconds. And there we go. So all we're doing is we're just going to make it brighten. And then let's also make it dim. So that... So remember that digitally all it's doing is turning it on and off but it's doing it at such a high rate that it all just blurs together to create uh, what looks like an analog signal so just go ahead and hit upload I've already got my Arduino attached uploading alright and uh, let's go take a look at the board so here we are it's running our code I've got an LED and a resistor hooked up to pin 3 and you can see it appears to be growing dimmer and then getting brighter and then dimming again and it, again it's moving so fast you can't see it so it's it's like motion tweening it's just all blurring together now if this weren't running is at such a speed you could see the individual step on step off but it's moving quick enough that it appears to be one contiguous signal. So that's using pulse width modulation as it applies to 
dimming an LED. Uh, you can use this, if I were to break out a multimeter, set this to 20 volts, and hook up my probes. And I should see something. So you can see, even though it's just turning it on and off, it appears to be an analog signal. See, it's growing and shrinking. Now, a multimeter works by taking an average of a whole bunch of an average of data points. So the reason it's not getting all the way up is because the delay I've added in and this is just going too slow to pick up the full range. But if you were to say stick this at 50% duty cycle and hook up your multimeter, you should see 2.5 volts, half of the whole digital output of 5 volts. So that's just one application. There is something else you can do with a pulse width signal. One of the other things you can do with pulse width control is to control one of these. What this is, is it's a servo motor and it's controlled by adjusting the period of on and off. Now, if you don't know what a servo is, it's a very specific kind of motor that doesn't spin all the way around. It spins in specific increments, usually from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, and you can control each of those increments by adjusting the signal's length. Now, with one of these, it's I showed you in my little diagram a one millisecond period. This has a twenty millisecond period, and you adjust the length of time that the signal is on to adjust this. So I'm gonna hook this up to one of my to my breadboard. Um, when I do that, if you've got a servo motor, and this is one of those with a female header, so what I've got are three male jump uh, mail pins so I can just plug those right into the end and it'll plug into my breadboard the cable I've seen these come in just about every color and combination you can imagine but the general rule is white is for data red is for power black is for ground uh, some of the data cables are ye uh, yellow instead of white so yellow for data still red for power black for ground so now, to control it, we're not going to be using an analog write. We're going to be using a built-in library to the Arduino, which takes care of all that stuff for this. Now, the Arduino library uh, provides a general rule for servos, but you, if you're using one that isn't supported by it, you might have to go out in the data sheet and look at the timing diagrams to get the degrees lined up and the timing sheet perfect. But if you've got one of these lying around, it should work with that. So let's go ahead and look at code. Okay, so what I've got here is just a blank program. And to control it, we're just going to use uh, some example code. So if you go under File, Examples, scroll down here to Servo, and we're just going to open Sweep. So here we have the Sweep library, or the Sweep example code. It's using the Servo.h library. Uh, this is actually really useful code if you're trying to drive servos for robots and it's nicely written it's easy to understand so it works by creating uh, works by creating servo what the hell works by creating a servo object and telling it what position to write to and it tells it which pin it's going to be using by saying my servo dot attach and we're going to attach to pin 3 instead of pin 9 and in the loop, all it's doing is it's writing a position to the servo from 0 to 180 degrees, stepping with a 15 millisecond delay in between, and then turning it backwards. So this is for, I assume, the servo they had lying around. Uh, if yours doesn't work with this, if you download it and it doesn't make your servo do anything, you should check your wiring, make sure that's right, and if that still doesn't work, you should go online and find your servo's data sheet and adjust some of the timings because it requires specific times for the period and the delays and the duty cycles to get it to work perfectly. Uh, if you need any help with that, I'd be more than willing to help. There are a lot of people out there online willing to help. So again, this just works for the servo and I'm kind of hoping it works with mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit upload. And we'll 
see what happens. Okay, so here we're back at the board, and I had to actually swap out this ser um, this servo for this servo because, as it turns out, this servo is a continuous rotation servo, not a uh, fixed degree servo. So it would actually rotate more like a motor, and the values you write to it adjust the speed. This is a fixed angle servo, and as you can see, this is one of those servos that the library doesn't work quite well with, so I'd actually have to go back and tweak it, and because this is the only server I have lying around, I'll probably end up making a video for it. But you can still see what it's doing as I set it to a position somewhere. It moves back because of the, there we go, because of that analog step. So it's hitting something in here just right to make it work. So you can still see the basic principle even though it's not working as I had intended. So, there you have pulse width modulation for its analog uses and its ability to control certain devices. So, this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.